The Caribbean Primary Exit Assessment is used to determine the placement of students into secondary schools. However, each year many parents whose children are not placed in one of the top schools complain that their children are at a disadvantage. Is there a two-tier system of secondary education in SPG? Is the placement of students under the present zoning arrangements putting students at a disadvantage? Do we need to restructure the system of schooling to more adequately address the needs of our students and society? Join our live program, The Viewpoint, on Sunday, June 30th from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. on SVG TV and Magic 103.7. Or view our live Facebook stream and be a part of the discussion by calling the hotline 458-0088 or WhatsApp 530-8962. Moderator, Mr. Curtis King. Panel, Mrs. Bernadette Graves, Senior Education Officer for Exams. Mr. Asfo Stevens, Former Principal and Former Senior Education Officer. Mrs. Aletha Gibson, Teacher and Parent. The View point sharing our thoughts speaking our truth Good night to our viewers and of course our listeners. Once again we are here in the studios and it's your time for the viewpoint. And tonight's viewpoint we are focusing on the placement of our students following the successful completion of the CPEA, what is called the Caribbean Primary Exit Assessment Examination. And as you know that exam is used to determine basically the placement of our students into the respective secondary schools throughout St. Vincent and the Grenadines. On tonight's panel, we have a very able panel, two females and a male, and I'm going to allow the panelists to introduce themselves, starting with our first panel down on my left. My name is Mrs. Alitia Gibson. I'm teacher and parent, and tonight I believe I'll be representing the parents' view and the show tonight. Okay. Okay, my name is Asso Stevens, and uh, I have been a former high school principal and also a former senior education officer with responsibility for secondary education. And uh, I am here to try to balance this the discussion regarding the placement of students into secondary schools and the whole issue of the so-called elite type education as, as opposed to a not so elite type education. Thank you. Yes. yes, and I am Bernadette Graves. I am the senior education officer with responsibility for examinations. And I'm here to explain the whole process of the placement of our grade six students into secondary schools. Good, so we have a very able panel. We have a parent and what Miss Gibson did not say to you is that she, her daughter successfully completed <laughs> the CPA um, uh, exams and will be placed in, in a secondary school or has been placed in a secondary school and will of course be joined into that secondary school come September. And Mr. Asfa Stephen, he has worked at I would say basically almost all levels of the system. So he brings mm -hmm. with him a lot of experience, as well as Mrs. Graves, who is that person who is responsible for supervising the CPA um, assessment, as well as um, the placement of these students. So we are going to take our first break, but don't move that dial. We'll be back. Welcome back to The Viewpoint. As we indicated earlier, our focus tonight is on the CPEA um, examination, which was recently held. Last Friday, schools were given the placement of the respective students. I guess by now, most persons have picked up their, their placement for their children. And those who have not yet done so, I'm sure Monday morning, you will be going to your respective primary school so ensure that 
you have the placement. But to put everything into context, we, we, we want to start by just looking briefly at our education system, especially as it relates to access to education. So I'm going to ask Brother Astro Stevens to start with a brief, brief overview of the system. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. King. Um, first and foremost, when we think of education, we think of teaching and learning. And a critical um, factor about education is that education must bring about positive changes in the lives of individuals, society, communities, wherever. Now, prior to the 1970s, only a few schools existed, um, secondary schools, that is. There were about 61 or so primary schools um, during the 1970s, which means that the primary focus of education um, prior to the 1970s was really on primary, having a primary education. Now, the church played a very important role in, uh, in the secondary school system. The, there was schools such as the St. The Martin Secondary School, the, the, con the convents, and uh, there were, you had um, also the Bishop's College Kingston and Bishop's College um, Georgetown, and uh, there were some private individuals who decided that okay to cater for those students who were not able to enter the, the St. Vincent Grammar School and the girls' high school. They were on stream, and so you have schools like the, um, the Intermediate High School and also the Emmanuel Secondary School. Now, during the 1970s, you, you had a well, a new focus, and more and more schools came, came on the scene, uh, but they were mainly referred to as junior secondary schools. And uh, students were only allowed to, to, to go up to Form 3. After Form 3, they had to exit school. However, I think in the wisdom of the, the politicians, government at the time, that students who are, the, these, instead of going up to Form 3, there was a quick conversion right up to, so persons went up to Form 5. So that is why you have a lot of these, um, what used to be junior secondary schools, becoming full-fledged um, secondary schools. Schools such as Peter Bedell Secondary School, the Barley Secondary School, or the Central Area Secondary School, the Union Island Secondary School, etc. Now, there were some changes in the to to cater for the for these varying school the varying um, school system and the students at the time students having been of different academic levels you had uh, what was referred to as the co-curriculum which really was social studies integrated science mathematics, English, and uh, also a technical vocational subject. Today, you have, we have well over, well over 60, second, 60 primary schools and about 26 secondary schools. With the number of secondary schools, it means that um, students, there are more school places, students are cannot just, as in the old days, access just grammar school, high school, or one of the, the other um, secondary schools, be it intermediate, um, St. Joseph's Convent, wherever. But there, there's a wider, there's a wider sp spread, spread of, of, of schools throughout St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And um, after the, after, well, during the turn of the millennium, um, the 20th century, education has 
especially in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, has a new focus, and that is education for all. And at the, uh, at the turn of the 21st century. 21st century, the 20th century, 21st, the 21st century, sorry. Um, and no child left mm -hmm. behind. So it means that every student now has an opportunity to be placed into a secondary school. Very and I think this is where our major concern is that everybody wants to, to go to what is considered the elite schools. And I think that my colleagues will further um, okay, well, wonderful, discuss this topic. Wonderful, Mr. Stevens. In fact, now we should hear from the supervisor of, not of the lecture, <laughs> of the examination <laughs> and the placement. Ah. And I must commend Mrs. Grace for responding positively. And I must say the PS of the Ministry of Education also responded positively because it is always important that state officials be available to provide this sort of information to the general public. So I'm going to ask Mrs. Grace to take us through the process. How, how, how do we end up with having a student being placed at this secondary school as opposed to our next secondary school. Take us through the process. All right. Thank you, Mr. King. Um, I'm happy to be given the opportunity to speak about the whole placement process because I'm not convinced that persons understand fully how, how, how it is done. So I'm really happy for this opportunity. Now we heard Mr. Stevens just a while ago mentioning universal access, all of the students are now placed. Now that's the policy of the Ministry of Education, that every child who sits the CPEA will be placed in a secondary school. Doesn't matter if you meet the requirements or not, you'll be placed in a secondary school. However, only the first 500 students have a school, have a place of their choice. And I will, I will expand on that just a little bit. But first, I want to look at the whole process. How is the selection done? What happens? How students get to where they are? Now, in common entrance, before we had the CPA, we had the common entrance examinations. And after the results are released for common entrance, we normally have persons coming to choose what school they want to go based on their results. Now, with the CPA, it's not like that. Students make their choices. The selection of schools are done at the point of registration. And that usually takes place sometime in October, November. Students in discussion with their parents or guardian will make the selection. The school now gets that. They enter that onto the online registration system. And that's a system that CXC uses for for their registration for CSEC, CPA, whatever it is, that's the system they use. They will register the students on the online registration system. Now, when registration is done, the principal has to now do a printout of the registration details for each child, for each candidate. Parents are to come in and verify the information on that. So they will come and they will look at the their, their date of birth, make sure that is correct. They'll ensure that the spelling of the child name is correct, ensure that the gender is correct, everything on that is correct. And at school, the choices that are made there, that everything is correct. Now, having done that, they will sign, put their signature, and date that. Now, the school will send that hard copy into us. So we have documentation at the Ministry of Education, yes. So we have documentation that the parents would have agreed in terms of the placement of the, the, the choices made for the school, that they would have agreed as to what is on that because that what, whatever is sent into us is what is on the ORS, the online registration system. So we safeguard that. We keep it safe until placement because we know what can happen. You know, sometimes parents come and say, oh, I never made that choice. But when you go back, when you go back to look at that, it's there and their signature is there. So we have that. So that's when selection of schools are done, are done at the point of registration that will take place in October, November. 
Now, let's look at placement of the first 500. So the results are released to the students. What happens with the first 500 is that they're placed electronically. So we don't, we don't have anything, there's no manual placement electronically. Let me explain, and I'm gonna use this year's result. We have Miss Marshall from prep school being the top student this year. So what, what the computer does, it looks at the overall position of the students, not the position by gender. It looks at overall position of the students. So Miss Marshall is the first, the first, she's in the top position, she's first. So the computer goes to her first, the, system, the program goes to her first, it looks at her overall position, then it looks at her choices, the choices she made in the school, in selecting the school. Now, let's say she chose high school first. So, when it goes to high school, it notes that high school is empty, it has space available. So it places Miss Marshall at high school, and then it, it goes on to the next person, the second person, the overall second person. It looks at their position, it looks at the choices they made when they did the registration, and it places them. So the first 500 students, as I said, are placed electronically, and the system looks at your overall position, it looks at the, 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 the school choices that you made, that were made, and it also looks at the availability of the space. So let's say high school, I'm gonna tell you high school this year took 120. So when it, after 120, high school is full, the system, the next person's gonna look to see what their second choice is, and so forth and so forth. So if Miss Marshall didn't choose high school as a first choice, if she chose convent, she will then get into convent. Now, when the placement list is released, I'm going to come to the other set of students just now, but I want to explain this part. When the placement list is released, there are some things that you will see next to the child's name. You will see chosen by school, sorry, chosen by student slash guardian, or you will see accepted by school. Chosen by student slash guardian means that the child is in the first 500 and that is the space that she got. That is true. The, right, that's, that, that she got her choice. Maybe not the first choice or the second choice, but she got one of the choices made at registration. And you will see accepted by school. In some cases, not very, very, not very much, very, very few. Now it means then that that child or parent would have gone ahead into one of our government assisted schools and ask if they can be accepted in and the school will send up that list to us. We normally have a list from the government assisted school before we start our placement. Like say convinced. Right, like Martin, convinced Martin, Bishop's Bishop, right. So they send a list into us okay. before we start our placement. So the list that they send will lock those children in as accepted by school. So if you see any of that, students would have gone ahead and asked. So that is the first 500. Those persons, the other set of students, 500 and first, 501 right down. Now those are placed manually and those students are given, where well, they're not given, they're sent to the school closest, the secondary school closest to where they live. So that's basically what happens. And next to their name, when the list is out, you will see placed by MOE, or slash accepted by schools. Some of them would have gone ahead, again, outside of, we don't, we don't have control over that. So there are some parents who come and they tell you, oh, but I know that this child come 800 and something and mine come five something and they get into convent. But we can't, that is not done at the ministry's end. The students would have gone ahead, they've asked, the school accepted, we just locked them in the system. Let me ask you a question. You, you said that those students who are placed outside of the first 500, they are placed to a school closest to them. Yeah. What about if one of those students made a choice of a school that is not close to where they live and the school has space? Um, there are times when you have, there are just many two schools in Kingston that they're not quite filled in the okay. first 500. Okay. So they just need a few more students 
to fill them. We consider those students who are living in Kingston or close to Kingston to mm. fill those schools. Okay. So if you live in Petty Bodell and um, you come very close up, we're not going to place you okay. in one of those schools. We'll Even if you chose to go there? Even if you chose to go there. Right. We have okay. to cater for those students close to okay. Kingston. Yes. Yes. So that is that part is, is what is like a type of zoning? Yes. Okay. Let's continue. Right, so um, so that's basically um, how the placement is done. Okay. Um, for the 500 and for those outside of the first 500. Okay, okay. And as you rightly explained, that process is assisted by the choice that the students made. Yes, and... Uh, for the first 500. And in the, the case of the next set of students who came beyond 500 and first, mm -hmm. they would be placed basically closest close to where, to they, where live. they live. Okay. Yes. Um, we have, I don't know if I could yes, mention this. Yes, but a few years ago, I'm going to just put up this. We did a pamphlet from the exams unit and we've been asking the schools, when you have your grade six meeting, you invite us so we can explain the process because we know that the choice that the student made is very important. Um, we have cases where um, persons would have come in after and say, oh, but I didn't know that the child is going to do so well. So if you can consider and all of that something. So if you... you Which brings me to our next question. <laughs> Suppose, okay, I have a son. I believe that he will pass in the first 500. But knowing that my choice St. Vincent Grammar School might only take 120. I might very well decide, well, his best chance is to place him, say, at a next school. So I put his first choice at the next school because I believe that boy, if he doesn't get into grammar school, I want him to get into one of these other schools. Let's say St. Martin's, dealing with the boys, mm -hmm. at St. Martin's. And I, I say, okay, I would put St. Martin's as his first choice. But in the event that he gets, I mean, he comes with 24, 120, then he should be able to go to grammar school. So I have no problem in, 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 in placing St. Martin's as his first choice and grammar school as second or third. But after the result, I want him to go to grammar school because he passed high enough to go to grammar school. How do you deal with that? As I said before, the first 500 is done electronically. Mm. So your order of choice is very important. Mm. Yes, you may know the ability of your child. It may not be grammar school material, as you want to say. Um, the child is going to get into St. Martin if that's what you chose. And he falls in the first 500. He will get into St. Martin's. If he so comes com 15th. The computer is not looking. The computer is not looking. It's not looking at that. It's looking at your first choice. choice. It's looking at the choices okay. you made. Okay. So that's why we say it's important that you choose wisely. Right. So don't put down an next school when so, you really want right, to go to Right. Grammar. So don't put down St. Martin's. <laughs> Sorry, St. Martin's. Yeah. Don't put down St. Martin's if you really want him to go grammar school. Yes. But you know he has his ability, but some children surprise yes. you, right? Yes. So if you want, you really want grammar school as your, you know, you really want him to get into grammar school, you make grammar school your first choice and St. Martin if he doesn't get into grammar school definitely he may get into grammar school St. Martin depends on his, his position yeah. right into St. Martin's yeah. yes so choices um, are important okay alright Mrs. Gibson you have a daughter and she would have done well are you satisfied with her placement? <laughs> yes I'm satisfied with her placement yeah. as I would always tell my children um, you get what you work for yeah. Um, her first choice was um, GHS yes. and during the time when she would um, be studying we would tell her you have to work hard yes. now when she went in and she sat the CP and her result came back and we got the placement it's convent yeah. Yeah. But even before she got the placement she knew yes. that she wasn't going to make it to GHS because from yeah. the time she entered primary school that was her motto GHS GHS yeah. because you know the concept that mm -hmm. has been yeah. placed <coughs> So I am pleased with because she maintained the um, percentage that she um, for the past three years in primary, primary school. school. So she went in with that, and that is what she showed when she came out. Yes, 
And you have no difficulty with that? No, I don't have any difficulty. Okay. So was any comment quickly on the whole issue of the placement as outlined by Mrs. Grace? Well, as a <coughs> former um, senior education officer, I mean, I understand the process. And uh, the placement, the way that I see it, even up until now, is that it, in my mind, it is balance. In the sense that a good student will get into the school of his or her choice. The student that is not so good as we, and I put that in inverted commas because good is relative. relative. Yes, because, because and the day itself, <coughs> Know what could happen. Yes, um, good is relative because a student may not be strong academically, but might be good in music, or maybe a good dancer. Because when you look at the at the multiple intelligence as put forward by Howard Gardner, right. you realize that students vary. And intelligence vary. Mm. So I am fully satisfied with. <coughs> I am satisfied with the, the way that the students are placed because it allows every child to get to where, where it, in other words, to get into the first 500 and have a more democratic choice than a than a false choice. Okay. Oh, yeah. <coughs> no, well, I was just about to say, um, the the schools, the top, let me invert it, commas, the top schools are accessible to all of our students, from far as fancy north and Fitzhughes, right down to South Union Island. Okay. It's accessible to all of I our students. I want you to stick up in there. We are going to discuss this whole issue of mm -hmm. top school and, and so on. In fact, the two-tier system, whether or not that exists when we come back after the break. But let me just advise callers that after this break, we are going to take your calls. Remember, you can follow us via Magic Radio or the live stream on SVG TV. We allow you to call in this segment coming up. The hotline is 458-0088 or you can send us a WhatsApp message it's 530-8962 is the number. Again, you cannot call us via WhatsApp, but you can send us a message via WhatsApp. And the number is 530-8962. So, we will be right back. Welcome back to The Viewpoint. Well, in this segment, we want to look at whether or not there exists a two-tier system of secondary schools in St. Vincent. And perhaps I am going to read one of the many messages that we have received so far. I really can't read all because, look, this is about 34 <laughs> messages. But the gist of what this lady is saying, she is saying that her son plays 290th for boys and 688 overall. He was placed at, I would call his school name, at St. George Secondary School. I think she means West St. George Secondary School. She is not satisfied with it. She is saying why he couldn't be placed in one of the good schools in Kingston. I put good there in quotation marks. I don't want him to go to St. George Secondary. How can I change it? She is saying he attended the Kingston Anglican School. She said where there was problems, I'm not going through the, those issues as a, for the ministry. He did well, and I'm not satisfied with the placement. So, well, certainly this lady has some issues. I, I would hope that she would have listened to the explanation. If she is still not satisfied, as she has indicated, it's all right to take it up with the Ministry of Education, right? But what her question or her comments has given rise to is the very issue that we, we have. But let us take a call, so keep that one in mind. 
There's a call on line. Good night, caller. Hello. Yes, good night. Hola. Yes, tell me. Hello. We are scarce. Time here is scarce, so you have to be sharing with us. Otherwise, you have to move on. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, the line is breaking up. Uh, you know, I'm trying to call about this program. Well, you are on, so share with us quickly. Yeah, the program is nice, but um, the lady, she's not talking to me. The, the, the two things, she, she needs to talk about the basics, because if, if some um, child go to um, do the exam, and she wants to go to a secondary school, and she she gets taught math and she picks you another school. So how is the situation with her? She got sort of math. Oh, sort of math. Good. So basically, well, I'll allow the panelists to address that. Yeah. All right. Um, let me get let me get back to the lady yes. top. I was in the program right now. Yes, good. Okay. Yes. Um. The lady top inverted comma school in Kingston. Let me just spell these schools out because students subscribe to these schools and they are heavily subscribed to. We have the girls high school. These are the schools in Kingston. We have the girls high school. We have St. Joseph's Convent, Kingston. We have St. Martin Secondary School. We have St. Vincent Grammar School. We have Thomas Saunders. We have Intermediate High School. And we have Bishops. Dr. J.P. Eustace and we have Bishops. Bishops. Now, Girls High School, Convent, St. Martins, Thomas Saunders, Bishop, did I call all of them? Grammar School. Grammar school. These are the schools that the students want to go. Now, and in the first 500, these schools are filled. Grammar School is filled, high school is filled, and they can only take a certain number. Some of these schools are bursting at the seams. Grammar school and high school take the largest number of, of, of students. Yes, and they're bursting, they need help, they want, right, they need to ease up on their numbers. So grammar school, high school, the largest number. We have convent, not even getting to 100 students. Um, bishops, St. Martins, Thomas Saunders, right? So these schools are heavily subscribed to, and in the first 500, they are filled because they can only take so many students. Now, the only schools that are left in Kingston are Intermediate High School, and we have the Dr. J.P. Eustace Memorial Secondary School. Those are the only two schools that are left in Kingston. But there are students who are living in Kingston. Remember the other school that I mentioned a while ago, as I said before, that they are accessible to the entire population of students, grade six students, mm -hmm. from North Fancy Fitzhughes mm -hmm. right down to Union Island. So we have students from all over the country accessing um, high school, grammar school, and those other schools. And when they are filled, the only schools, that the only two schools in Kingston that are remaining are Intermediate High School, and we have Dr. J.P. Eustace Memorial, and we must consider students who live in Lodge Village Sharps and Kingston Park and all of those places that they must be placed into a secondary school. So we must place students in their community. You must go to the school closest to where you live, and that should not be a problem because you don't have to think about transportation and you don't have to think about food and all of that. Okay, next question. Good night. Why couldn't the children who did not reach the 500 range be placed in a school based on their overall performance since kindergarten and their reading level? <laughs> Yeah, I can't. Yes. The system doesn't allow for that. <laughs> but they replacing it by the overall position. But, but I think I get the gist where the person is coming from. But let us look at this thing because the bigger issue here is whether or not we have a system of education in St. Vincent and the Grenadines that allows you quality secondary education regardless to which school. 
your place. That is the issue. Are there two levels of secondary school? One where you get good quality education, and where one, the other way quality is poor, based on the fact that um, the resources at one set of schools are so many in terms of the material resources, in terms of the human resources, and at the other end, the resources are so poor that only the so-called top school could offer quality education. Is that so? I would like to, um, <coughs> yes. I would like to um, make my comments here. Yeah. Now, prior to, as to the 1970s, yeah. it would have appeared that a lot of the, 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 the quality resources yeah. was at, at the, in the grammar school, the girls high, etc. But after the 1970s, with, with the advent of um, um, the junior secondary schools, and even up to today, our system is making it better for every student to have a, a good quality education. Now we think of our principals, for example. Years gone by, there was uh, some of our uh, our principals were were not. A lot of our principals were not university trained. That's true. Teachers Today we have uh, all of our principals university trained, and the majority of teachers in our secondary schools, even in the primary schools, are accessing mm -hmm. university training, mm -hmm. and. Uh, are also university trained. But I would argue that the quality of education depends significantly on the commitment of teachers and the parents to ensure that their, their, their child or ward gets a quality education that is second to none. Now, it doesn't mean to say because the child went to grammar school or high school that the child is going to become a sparkling, a, a sparkling, brilliant child. I will do, I will do excellent. I mean, in years to come, a child can go to West Saint George because your parent here querying about her child <laughs> going to West Saint George and making a, and not very satisfied with the child going to to West Saint George. But all of these secondary schools have quality teachers, quality physical resources, quality instructional resources, quality human resources. And uh, I would say even better than the grammar school and the high school. A lot of these schools have you know, better resources. And uh, so I don't think that, that I'm a child not going to a secondary school, grammar school or high school, puts that child at a disadvantage. Okay, we have a next caller. So let us take the call. <laughs> Good night, caller. Welcome. You're Good on. night, gentlemen. Yeah. Right. I want to trip in here on your discussion. And I'm looking <laughs> at your last caller there, uh, last speaker there, speaking about the um, quality of education in the um, other schools. Now, prior to our ha who we have in the universal secondary ed education, after coming entrance, the, the students were left more or less behind. Mm -hmm. And it was left to the church schools to take up this flat. And, they, and folks were able to set exam and pass the church schools. We would have reported to those that were, that as quote unquote, the reject. But these children went to these short schools and came out very well and have done very well. Mm -hmm. And I think somewhere the Ministry of Education did that do enough to recognize the contribution that these schools have been, make, um, have been making. And because of that, people see them, look down on them, rather than look up at their contribution they have, that they have made. Now, some time ago I heard grammar school and had 90-something percent pass rate. 
And I said I was disappointed because we had the best students and gave us 95. These schools have more or less the lesser students and are coming out with good grades. So we have to give recognition to those other schools and let people know. And as the speaker was a while ago, say, let them know that these schools are quality schools and they have been continuously over the years delivering students. Thank yes, you. yes, fair enough. And, and let me just say, as Brother Stevens was saying, that in yeah. fact, there are in some of these secondary schools, especially in the rural areas, whose school plans are better than some of the school plans in King Song. And, and you mentioned, Mr. Stevens, about the training of teachers and so on. I, I went to a, 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 a sec the same Western George Secondary School um, graduation ceremony. And I look at the qualification of those teachers. They are comparable and better than some of the so-called in inverted commas, mm -hmm. top school. Mm -hmm. But I like how you put it. The fact is that our teachers and others are advancing themselves. And now is not the time when you would have three graduates in a school. I was saying to Mrs. Grace on my way down, if West St. George has 11 teachers, nine exactly. are university trained. And, and more than that, most of our teachers now going into the secondary school system are also professionally trained in education and teaching. So where resources are concerned, certainly there isn't that big difference. If there is a difference at exactly. all. Yes? Can I yes? Okay, Let's so skip. Let's skip. from his parents' standpoint, I've, I've listened to Mr. Stevens and I've yeah. heard the history coming down. Yeah. And then something that stood out to me, the senior and junior school coming yeah. down through the years, right? And here it, it's um, facing us where we have, as you said, the quote-unquote um, good schools. Mm -hmm. It's still it, um, placing our minds that these schools are the top. I could remember being in conversation with various people where they used to say, if a teacher is doing good in uh, one of the not-so-good schools, there would be chance for immediately to these good schools. Joke. I've heard <laughs> that over the years. I, I don't have the facts. I, I'm just a, yeah. just hasty. No, it is still placed in the parents' head, in our minds, that this school, if our children don't get into this school, that they wouldn't do well because they would have everything accessible there. No, this is the misconception. The ministry have to, the people have to, the, the media have to get out of the parents' mind. And if that is not um, put aside, you're going, you're going to have this every year after CPE. People are going to call something with the children of 1,000 some and want them still to get into one of these good schools. That's right. Whether the perception is real and... Whether it, it is, is real. Exactly, it is still there. This is with any reaction to that as a former CEO. I remove the good teachers from some of these schools and send them to the top performing schools. Well, I think if, if, if the Ministry, Ministry of Education had done that, I might have been one of the top standards of the teachers and the principal. I have work at this school. 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 We have we seen, seen where it is not so much, so much the, the quality of students that we get, get, but how are you able, able to, to, to transform, transform these students, students into becoming, becoming the best, best, the, the, the best citizens? Exactly. Exactly. And I think that is what is critical. Yeah. Yeah. There are some messages that we have to respond to. If my child comes 540 seconds overall, does he get a chance in a top school? Again, the top school. I just see 500. Well, it was explained. He has to be in the first 500. So 542 is outside of that. Um, good night. My son. So yes, good night. My son wrote the CPA exams, but I don't want him to go to. It's the next person. Don't want him to go to a particular school. He is 11 years old, so she wants to send him back to the primary school. She wants to know if that is allowed. 
Um, well, we have universal access. All of the students are placed in a secondary school. Now the conversation from then has to be between the parent and the primary school to which the, the parent want the child to attend. The, minute, the Ministry of Education does not encourage that, but if it is the, the principal yeah. wants to accept the child back into school, then they can do so. Okay, good question here. Good night. If the government-assisted schools can fill spaces with students outside of the first 500 positions, does this mean a child can come within the first 500 and not be placed in a school yeah, of their choice? This person is asking, if the child comes, no, sorry, if the government-assisted schools mm -hmm. can fill spaces with students outside of the first 500 position, does this mean a child can come within the first 500 and not be placed in a school of their choice? Okay, let me, um, let me explain. The government-assisted schools will give us the number of students that they can take each year, right? And of course, if convents say, okay, I can only take 50 from you this year, because they take, they take a number of students from us, as well as they take from their church as well. So they'll take the 50 from us, and the 50 they get are, because persons are wanting convent, they will get into convent. Mm. So that's the 50 already. So there's no, there's no way that we can go out of that number. Now they will send their list to us as to how many they'll take extra they'll yes. take in so um I, I that's how i that's how i can respond to that question okay good we have a next question that i could answer but i want to hear mr stevens response or even your response because you're both in the ministry this person says i'm very disappointed with the special allocation given to the grammar school and girls high school in terms of the finances this is so unfair <laughs> Anybody um, want to? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I the first thing that I want to say here is that the concept of the grammar school and the girls' high school is not anything that is new. Mm -hmm. In education, any part of the world, yes. you are going to have this kind of discourse yes. where persons are saying, "Well, okay." I want my child or my ward to go to the best school, to go to the best college, to go to the best university. That is why you have uh, universities in the world like Oxford and Harvard and John Hobson. You know. if those, so the thing is, going to the best school does not necessarily mean that you are going to get the best outcome. Yeah. The one out okay. no, but why is take a penny? The because they are talking about special no, allocation. But the truth is that no longer that, that, no, that longer no longer exists. exists. It no longer exists because, because every, you look at the, all of the secondary schools now are they allocate group. for all of the secondary That's schools. Right. So high school and grammar school no longer have that special allocation. They are within they are the group. All of the secondary yeah. schools. My are argument school. about the, the 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 concept of the grammar school and the high school and so on is is a perception, mm. you know, that it, it is a mindset that here, this is the, the grammar school. And uh, once you go to the grammar school, you, you, you are deemed to become the best, the most outstanding academic. Mm. But this, this is something that we have to get out of our, uh, out of our psyche, yes. that, that best <laughs> depends on how the sort of changes that we are going to make to life and uh, to determine our life's chances. Yes, yes, let's get you. Okay. Question. Why then are they given the option to choose the top 120, I think you said 120, yeah. and grammar school given the, the, and then the other school coming and they get, why then are they given that? If they are not, okay, they are, they are straight across the board with all the other schools. Why they given that choice? Mm -hmm. that, that was from, yeah. Well, a I think what that, happened, those two thing. schools are the two oldest okay. secondary okay, schools. So then it, and and, mm. and hence, it, it, again, you see, you have to go back to when these schools were started. 
the, the girl, that's right. And say the girls' high school even started as a private school before yeah. it was taken I, I, over I by the authorities. And even the St. Vincent Grammar School too, in a sense that it was it was not private, but it was really only open to the planter class, planter class, the, 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 the upper classes, the rich, the, the, the rich. And, and, and then you 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 had to basically compete. I and then that is so, what everybody is doing in CP. It's a competition. Right. Anyway, we have an next caller. Sorry, we'll continue this. Good night, caller. Good night. Okay, miss the caller. Yes, so I was saying, mm -hmm. over the years, because of their ages, mm -hmm. these schools has, have established a culture of success. Exactly. It, yeah. And, and, and yeah. when you, the people, chill, we have the caller. Good night, caller. Good night. Good night, caller. Yes, good night. Yeah. Uh, but very interesting discussion tonight. Um, however, I want to go back to something that was discussed a little earlier. Yeah. Um, you were talking about the um, resources that are given to the area school um, in terms of the quality of education in secondary school. Um, while I agree with you that um, in terms of human resources and so on, just a trade, just um, they are degrees and so on. But does it make does it make the playing field level for us yet? Because in my opinion, um, when you look at the way placements are done, um, most times the students who um, may give a little trouble now and then. Um, they are distracted in classes. Those students have a place in schools near to their home. Hence, they become distracted to their students. And I quite understand why some parents say uh, they don't want their child to go to church in secondary schools because there are yeah, stigma that are attached to their schools. Um, and when I thought about this discussion, I, I said I agree for this. Because recently in a discussion, I was saying to someone, if I am an employer, and the person was supposed to come to me, same level, same in level. Let's say one went to a rural secondary school and one went to grammar school. Who would I employ? Most likely, the students who went to grammar school but then there's your so, personal bias, so why? Because it's, it's the why? culture. Why? I think you would no, employ the one who is most saying, qualified. What, what I am saying, uh. it is because of this stigma that is attached to school. So yeah, but you... The secondary school that a child, the secondary school that a child goes to, it matters. A caller. Right? So we cannot just say, well, it, it level and then, Level for, for, for our students. Carla, I am not going to doubt you that that the perception is out there with these schools. That somehow, if you went to one of these schools, that you you would have made it. But I'm saying, if you now, you as the caller, you are saying that you would employ the person who went to the grammar school. No, no, no. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that I would, you know. Huh? I'm saying that employers out there, if you're, you're looking at... Yeah, but uh, there are plenty of employers who employ like that. And they're, mm. they're the same. Mm. Right? Mm. More than likely, an employer is going to apply a child with a person who attended the girls' high school or grammar school than a secondary school. I, I would so, say... Um, something you said when you that... Um, that not only the best comes from like grammar school and those those schools, but I usually say grammar school, the best of from grammar school. You have the best um, academically, but you also have some of the best criminals coming from that school. Yes, Martin. You know? Um, so if you look at it that way, you always have the best. 
Yeah. So thanks for allowing me to make my point. Okay, fair enough, caller. Yes, but the, the point the caller is making and what I'm trying to get across, there are good students who are coming out of the grammar school and there are bad students. There are good students who are coming out of one of these so-called other schools and they are bad students. So that is the point. And somebody made the point. It's not so much the school now no, that you go to or attend. It's the support you get at the school you attend and how you perform as a student. Yes. Good night, Carla. Yes, good night, sir. Yes, good night. Listening, you are debating about, about schools. Yeah. Now, if we look back on history, yeah. grammar school and the girl high school was designed for a certain class. Yes, exactly. Of exactly. People, children of society, let me put it that way. Yes. And now we reach down to a point in life where it exposed now to the lower class which I think it didn't prepare for poor people children to reach to such standard to attend these schools. And we're talking about some colonial days coming back. I think you and Mr. King as the past principal, mm -hmm. you should know some of the history of that. Yeah, So mm -hmm. the point in debating and talking about the, 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 the stigma and the status of the school it will always have an advantage because of we come and meet that setup that was placed before we some of us born. So it's in the heart and the mind of people to say, well, okay, I want my child to go to the best school, to go to the school of discipline, more discipline, more respect. Because if we really check it out, grammar school and high school still have the discipline <laughs> outstanding all the other schools. No, not it, it, necessary listen, so. Listen me. No, it ain't necessary so. It but ain't listen, necessary so. But time. listen, but no, listen, Mr. King. Hmm. We know children come from all different backgrounds of life. Yes. You will have some bad egg between. Yes. But when you look at the standard, I don't I don't care what you tell me. I can see. When you look at the standard, it is still helping some children that come from no way to open their eyes where they're going. Because some of the schools like the Emmanuel mm -hmm. and Timmy and all these other schools, when you look at the quality, these are the dressing of the children going to school. Okay. You want to know what's going on. So the point I'm just trying to draw, I don't want to stay long. Mm -hmm. We have to realize that a standard has been placed in those two schools. And it can't be broken so easy neither. Don't care what we say. It will not be broken so easy. And it is fair that I, as a poor man, would like to see my son and my daughter go to grammar school, girl high school. Exactly. And, and I will feel proud of that because what I'm saying, they have a standard that still outruns many of the other secondary school in St. Vincent. And also what the brother has was talking about, um, the, 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 the educational equal, I still, in my opinion, they still outrun. I don't care what you say. You see, sometimes in these debates, you can't open your mouth and say certain things that might bring offense. But we can't polish up the truth. The truth is that these school will all, it done designed so, we meet it so, and we'll have to live with it that way. That they have a standard that everybody will want to gravitate. So we have to really look at the, the, the essence of this whole thing. It's not matter only who will come out of this and who will come out of that. And as the last caller said, that if I have two people come to look for work, and one say they go Bethel, the other one say I go grammar school. When we look at grammar school, and we think of grammar school, we heard of grammar school. It's a favorite, we might show a boy no, they, and especially if they have a, a good background behind it. We, you said the, the one from Bethel Hammer subject. We still yeah, wrong letter, wrong letter, wrong letter. Yeah, right? yeah. So, well, yeah. I, I gone. Yeah, 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 but I want you to continue to listen because you see, what I'm saying, there's no doubt that these schools, because of the length of time, 
that they have been around. They have built up over a period of time. If you like a center of excellence. Exactly. They, they have a culture of success. Exactly. So naturally, people would gravitate towards that. But I'm saying, at the same time, other schools have been advancing too. And believe it or not, there are some of the students who place in the top, um, what I say, 500, yeah. who yeah. might not necessarily choose to go to grammar school yeah, yeah. Or, or, or high school, those things happen. The numbers might be large, but that is so. And again, coming back to the same point about whether you go to grammar school or, or, or high school and the next school, that you would naturally choose the grammar school student. I don't know what people are talking about, but the employers I know, looking for the best person, it doesn't matter with school. And I am saying, I was part of a process not too long ago where we were employing several persons. And to me, I never used to look, and, and I'm speaking as a former grammar school student, a former headmaster of the grammar school, it ain't too long ago. But I didn't look at the school. I looking for the best person to fill the job. Exactly. And I, I would end by saying, and I feel proud of being part of that process, that the last major employment we did. There was a young lady from the Petit Badel Secondary School. And there were two grammar school, ex-grammar school students. But this ex-Petit Badel Secondary School young lady got the job. And we weren't looking for school at all. We were looking for the best person to do the job. Exactly. And believe me, a lot of employers think so. So people still have this perception some it ain't necessarily mean that is reality that people looking for need. Although I, I agree that given the culture of success and so on, they are mm. favored. But they necessarily mean that is like how he is put it. Sorry. We have an next caller. Good night, caller. Hey, good night. I wanna say first of all, calling from Washington DC and I'm very mm. happy you guys are having this dialogue because mm. dialogue like this is what's gonna take things above average. That's first of all, thank you very much for having this forum. Yeah. Second of all, success. Yeah. What is success? We base success off our colonial master's That's standards. Right. Right. Time enough, we kick down that door eh? and stop follow people and be trendsetters. Yes. First of all. And, and when we say success, for example, Graham, I went to St. Martin's, and in my opinion, St. Martin's is the best school there was, and the best school there is, so and the best school, school there will be. That's exactly. my best. That's my bias, but, but okay now. Yeah. If, for example, the chocolate company down there, who, Vincent and Chocolate, they ain't gonna go for a grammar school child, they're gonna go for somebody from country who could chop <laughs> a cutlass <laughs> and plant a cocoa tree <laughs> and know how food, you know what I mean, diggy bank. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I don't <laughs> accept your point. Don't forget, plenty of grammar school <laughs> students came uh, from the country, country too. Yeah. <laughs> but they, they might be, but, 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 a, but a typical grammar school child could read a book and regurgitate exactly what the book say, mm. unless they go in the hills and plant we, because I have a lot of grammar school friends who are so quote unquote bad boys. Uh, of Same course, all Martin. schools. But, but, mm. and, and exactly, and what I want to say now, I want to see agriculture mm. implemented in a school and in St. Vincent, that mm. each school that each school could feed itself because we have we have thing a thing in St. Vincent, lifestyle diseases that's been introduced in St. Vincent based off the exportation of poison in our country. So now to eradicate that, we have to get rid of the colonial mindset that something that's pretty, like a pretty book, telling you apples is oranges, and it's oranges are really need, but the book telling you you have to eat apple. So we have to be trendsetters in, in, in that respect, you understand what I'm saying? So we have to look outside the box, Jed, and stop, follow what's not, what's not have been working for us because some colonialism, colonialism never put, give us the advantage, it have us at the disadvantage up to today. Okay, so the enough. mindset now that our child have to go mm. to grammar school when you live down Chatty mm. we have to get rid of that because the school in Chatty is just as good as grammar school because guess what now? Child who going, the child who go in Kingston from Chatty is at a disadvantage because right. the money that the parents have to yeah. spend to send a child St. Martin's or high school or grammar school, putting that parent at a disadvantage versus leaving that money in the community of Chatibele mm. to enhance that child education because they could have afford to buy them a MacBook in that year instead of spending money for catch a van. Okay. Or the child from down Beckway who risking their life coming on boat every day. 
So we have to get rid of that mindset because it's just a facade. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because my parents spent a lot of money for me to go to St. Martin's and to be honest, I mean, I reach no way because of St. Martin's because I was a quote-unquote bad boy and it's something like you may come. Okay. You understand right. what I'm saying? So well I'm said, brother, but we have to take the break now. But really interesting. You can continue to yeah, follow man. us on the live stream. Yes. Yeah, respect. Yes. Okay, so listeners, viewers, we have to take the break now. It seems well overdue. Sorry about that. <laughs> Welcome back. We are into our final segment. But we have had so many responses. We definitely have to read some of these messages. And we will continue to take your calls. But give me a little chance. Let me get some of these messages out of the way. Why? This one says, why? I, well, after, why are you zoning children? And some of them, some of their marks are not for the school's you zone them to. They pass high, but you zone them to a school where the parents don't like. I don't think that is. For example, they say, Convent Marco was my, choi my child's first choice. I never put down Sinclair Deacon, and they send her there. But I think that was explained where it is said that, look, these schools could only take a certain so number, yeah. and you're putting them based on their position, as well as some of these um, government assisted, private, whatever you want to call them, schools do take some students on their own accord outside of the ministry's authority. And if, and and if, we, and if, we, yeah. if we do that, we're going to leave. Some schools will never get any students. Right. Some will be left empty, so yes. we have to zone. But the children. point we have to keep emphasizing is that the resources in the schools are much Basically. more evenly spread today than back then. And if we give, I mean, look, when CXC results come out, we see that students are performing. It doesn't matter with school. It is true that the top performers go to certain school. They're going to perform better than the others. Yes. That is a given. But that is and a normal every thing. society <laughs> have these type That's of the schools. Thing. We, we're sticking culture, and we're sticking norms. So we had to think about a way we could just... Good, so we're into this part now. So <laughs> what are you suggesting? We change the system? We are talking. Do you think we need to we, change the system, we, tweak it? We can oh. tweak it. We can change it. We can mm. look at other systems that has been working. For example, Finland um, education mm. system. I admire their system. Mm. Yeah. Where they start from a young age and they identify these skills. And another thing with our education system. Yeah, no, but make the point. Yes. So I are you saying they don't have centers of excellence? All the schools are even? They don't have they, high flyers? They put children. They try to mm. identify the special skills. They teach them the core. But they identify the special specialness about the child yeah. and put them into the area that they need to be. Yeah. We are in a system where everybody rushing after the same bread. Beautiful. That is what I think now. As we are saying in this segment, the question is, and, and I, I, I'm yes, the question is, um, do we need to restructure the system of schooling to 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 more adequately? cater for the needs of our students and society. And I think you are alluding to that because some persons have argued that, look, we need to expose all of our students to, say, a basic secondary education. After that, though, we need to, as you're saying, identify what is the best area for these students. Because clearly, it is difficult to have a child who is reading at pre-primary level or reading at uh, grade two level and you put in that same child in a class with a grade seven reader, I mean, he is going to get left behind. You have to have a special program that would bring that child up to that level or you have to look yeah, at the other areas that he might excel in. Yeah, because there are students who have um, graduated from secondary school that yeah. cannot read. They cannot, some of them cannot do basic maths. Yeah. They have ready. So then if we have a core, where, they, where children do the core, and then we need to stop this thing where we think that um, because a student wants to go into the Tibet area and he's good at science, he should yeah. stick in the science subjects. Yeah, yeah. We need to change that. We need to, I, because we would always have this issue where children, students are falling back and they're putting into these 
lower schools and then they're coming out and they're being a burden on society itself. And then when they, when they, when they fail, as we would put it, they end up in Tibet. And when they come to Tibet, they have to do um, physics, <laughs> chemistry, maths, language. Okay, well, the viewers are also part of the program. So let us take some of their messages. This one for you, SEO Grace. Can you specify how many spaces does the government assisted schools resolve for their own use? Or, <laughs> <laughs> you can't for their own use. <laughs> yeah. I can't say for their own use. I can tell you how many they ask us for. Right. But I can't say um, for their own use. Yeah, but basically I think what the person wants to know, whether or not these schools... Um, okay, they, they, they take, say, 90, mm -hmm. but I might say 20 f for, from us, and we would take 70 from, from the ministry. Percentage-wise, yeah, you don't know. I can tell you off, bat, off mm -hmm. the bat now, for Convent Kingston, mm -hmm. they usually take around 70, 70 right. students. Right. So they ask us for 50. Mm -hmm. So, and they will make up the number of the others. So... That's all I can tell you. Some still probably take more than that, but they give us a number, we give them okay. how many they ask. All right, this person says good night to the panel. I'm a Vincentian. I am living in Barbados. I'm not trying to change anything, but every parent fill out a card of the zones the children mm -hmm. live in. Only two uh, out of zone school will be on the paper. Oh, only two out of zone schools will be on the right. paper. I also believe, the, the person is explaining in how Barbados, Barbados does their okay, zone. Okay. I also believe the students who did not pass should be placed in a school and all should graduate. In my time, it wasn't no graduation. It was a good program. <laughs> <laughs> um, parents need to discipline their children, please, yeah. instead of going after the teachers to fight. I'll set an example. Thank you. Um, but the point, the person is suggesting, perhaps, yes, with the zoning, if, if you chose two oh, schools gosh. out of your yeah. zone, it might make it But easy. then we, we normally, but, we normally yeah. advise, we advise them in terms of making the selection. There is a form that we send to the school, how you should go about making your selection. And you must, you must choose schools within your own district. Yes. So that is done. This one, good night. I love your discussion. I listened to the last caller. He was making a point on standard. But the truth is, who sets the standards for the school? Each school can develop its own standard. Yeah. Good point. Question for SE or Grace. There were some students who had special arrangements based on their needs. How do you cater for these students going into secondary school? Well, I'm saying in the primary school, you know, um, some schools, what they do, they make special arrangements mm -hmm. for them. Yeah, 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 yeah. you're aware yeah, So yeah. she's asking, uh, the caller is asking, how do you um, cater for these students now that they're moving into the secondary school where there was kind of arrangement might not be necessarily present? Well, um the arrangement this year, there were some persons who were slow learners and slow readers and all of that. I know some of the schools that they were placed, there's a literacy program. Mm -hmm. So they're supposed to help those students along um, in that regard. There are a couple cases with some side problem. I know the ministry is right now marking some teachers to be trained to assist those students when they get into secondary schools. So it depends on the problem with the child. The schools are equipped. The schools are equipped. The secondary schools have the literacy program and the students um, do okay. get help there. Do we have a caller? Yes, let's take some calls now. We had messages. Let's take some calls. Good night, caller. Good night. Yes, good night. I just want to respond to your, your last question, right? Yes. Um, well, actually, I want to say how I feel. Yes, the, please do. Like this rural secondary school, like you, you're talking about where well, you just mentioned something about the language, the, you're talking about English and math being done in secondary schools and so on. And um, if 
students in some of these schools should really be frustrated with these subjects, right? Mm -hmm. um, in my opinion, you know, some of the best technicians are in some of these secondary schools, especially in rural schools. They are frustrated with these science subjects. Mm -hmm. They are frustrated with English, even English and math, they are frustrated with Spanish and French, right? Mm -hmm. How about if our education system could implement a um, some curriculum to do maybe A plus, maybe web designing, maybe some computer science subjects that the students may be interested in. The thing about this, uh, because they'll be interested in it, they won't jump out of school, but they would continue. And when exactly. they finish with school, they would be able to be employed. And I, I, that, that's just my view on that. Yes, and, and yes, Mr. Sims. Um, a lot of what we are talking about are actually happening in the education system. In that schools, I mean, the, the system, the education system um, is trying its best, I'm saying St. Vincent Grenadines, to cater for the varying needs of students. Now, in the case of, of um, we have, a, all of our schools have a, a tech vac component. Yes. And I think that based on what the last caller is speaking about, that there is a tech vac component in, in, in our school system to cater for the for the skills, the the, 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 the psychomotor skills and the motor skills that people that that, that, that people have. And uh, with this, what I see um, regarding our, our, our education system, we will not be able to teach a child or to teach people every single thing that they want to know. But what, what the education system does is to help persons to transfer knowledge and skills from one area of discipline to another area of discipline. So, 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 so school should be designed to, to cater for, for the varying skills. But you can't teach, you cannot have a curriculum that would, that would teach you every single thing. It, it will not be possible if not the curriculum would be, would be massive. Um, you see again, this question keep coming up, but as we indicated, the the, the government assisted or the private schools, they do have, let us take for example, some of the religious schools, they keep certain positions for their members, because exactly. remember, their members are paying to maintain pathway, because you know, government assisted these schools. So I'm getting a number of calls about um, the private schools taking in people who come below other persons that they know. But that was explained. Uh, that that, that was, was explained. explained. So let us take the next one. Good night, caller. Good night, caller. Hi, good evening, ladies yes. and gentlemen. Curtis, yes. I think you should be a revolutionary in education here. <laughs> I know you said something uh, just now which I am happy to hear. And then if we can achieve the changes, the necessary changes that are required, then I can call it an education revolution. You know, education revolution is bandied about today in our society. I am not sure that we have had that education revolution yet. More students are able to access education and nothing is wrong with that. With development, we expect that to happen. But catering for our own needs, that's where I would like to see the education revolution take place. So it can fit, you know, our students to make the best contribution to the development of our nation. And, you know, I am one who also believes that um, prestige, prestige in education is something that will attract or encourage students to aim for the top position in the world, not only some integrity, right? So I have no problem with the brightest students. Being identified because we all may have the same, we all may have a brain, but not the same brain. If you understand where I'm coming from. So I just want to 
Um, but good, good, good program, and it's all for the development of the nation. Thank you. Have a good day. Yes, Miss Gibson. Okay. Yes. Um, about um, Mr. Stevens, make a point um, about the curriculum being too long. What I'm, I am thinking, I am envisioning in my head is that it's not leaving a student until they reach from three or wherever yeah. to choose yeah. at that point what subject are already into the science or so on. I'm talking about identifying at an early age where you're going to nurture that student or that child into a profession like where... Like special or gifted children. Yes, into a professional where they're going to be... Because, be because then we don't have to bring engineers from overseas yeah. to, to, um, to, to do what we need, hey. Yeah. Because once we could have students that could help um, in the infrastructure and building, we, we don't need much outside of St. Vincent. Okay, let us take the call. Though. We might have to come back to discuss that <laughs> restructuring in the educational system. Good night, caller. Welcome to the viewpoint. Good night to the Paulinus. Yes. Now, I want to find out something. These government-assisted schools, when your child pass and they go to the school, you as a parent visit the school, uh, you send the child to school, they come in back home and say, listen, the principal said that I have to bring sometime $200 or $250 or $300. Now, I want to know why is it, if the child passed and he was placed in that school, government assist in that school, I think, I could be wrong, but I think whenever government assist in that school, they are giving the school in a amount of to compare to the amount of students that they send to that school. So why should be parents be paying three hundred dollars, two hundred and fifty dollars, two seventy five, and they said they come in for lot of poor people in this that. country? I would like to know something about that. Because I could recall when I had my children went to secondary school, two went to St. Joseph Convent, two went to grammar school, but one went to Bishop College. And when she went to Bishop College, when she got home, she said to me, listen, the, pay, the principal said I have to bring $75. I said, for what? Because you pass, at that time was common entrance. I said, you pass common entrance, why should I pay? So I went to the school, and I asked for the principal, and the principal said to me, well, look, this money is to in case your child damage anything in the school to prefer. I said, you know something? Let me tell you up front. I don't pay in one cent. If my child damage something for you in the school, send the bill for me, I will pay. Apart from that, I am paying no money because you passed common entrance. Thank you very much. Could you okay. please explain that to me? Okay, good. Any response? <laughs> Seamus? Well, um, yeah. The government assisted and he is saying he is can't it? see um, why they have to ask for extra money. But it's just assistance. They're, getting, yeah. they're not getting everything. Just assistance. If you assist me, you're giving me something. You're not giving me everything. So I expect that you're charged to make up for what you're not getting. That's, that's my explanation. It's as assistance. You're not giving me all that I need. So how do I get all that I need to run this school? I have to implement some fees somewhere. Yeah, I, I, I do support Miss Graves on, on, on this because as a former principal myself, there are times when the school may need something additional that the government has not given or the ministry is unable to, to give. Yeah. And so the, the, the whatever little is, is asked for from the parents is to try to, is to, try to upgrade right. the, 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 yeah. the institution. Mm -hmm. And we should always as parents be seeing that our part in any school uh, in the education system should be participatory. Mm -hmm. It's not that the school alone must be doing this or the government alone must be doing that, but that we all should be should should be doing it together. Right. The community, together. yes. Exactly. Community okay, people. Carla, we are going to get back to you, but we are going to take a, our final break. So don't move your dial, please. We will be back. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. <laughs> we, actually, this is real book time. I'm doing so good. Sorry. <laughs> the time is too short. Yeah. Well, like, like the time is too short. No, no, sorry. This is actually wrap up time. 
so I'm going to give the panelists 30 seconds each to say your final bit. Mm. The time just flies. Okay, um, well, let me say my bit. So the placement list is out. Um, some parents, you are satisfied, some are not satisfied. Or whatever school your child was placed, you have to be involved in the child's, the child's education. Own the school, that your child's school, own the school, be involved. And it doesn't matter where the child was placed. If you are involved as a parent, then you will see your child blue. Thank you. Yes, um, well, from a parent point of view, it's as Miss um, Graves mentioned that own the school. Because from what we've, we noticed that the, the concept of the good school, it <laughs> doesn't seem like it's going to be changing quite soon in our minds. So the most important thing we as parents could do is focus on our child's education, invest as much as we could lies with the, um, the school that they're at. Don't look at the school as less than, but look at your child's education as the mm -hmm. most important thing that you can focus on. Well said. Well, I would like to say, according to the poet Edwin Markham, what Edwin Markham said is that it is not so much the, the school, but it is the love that you bring to the institutions. Okay. So, in other words, principals and teachers and the parents, the Ministry of Education should have a love for the students. They must feel loved and uh, the, 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 and to set their the achievement level higher than just being that is not a good school this one is better we should set realistic goals for our students because when our students would have finished um secondary school the students from all the different secondary school meet up at the same community college, college. Mm -hmm. and what happens from there think about it yes Thank you very much for being part of this panel. What I would advise the parents, and we have had a number of responses, this is most I've seen here. Um, parents do have um, grouses, especially over where their children are placed. You heard the explanation from the SEO. The most I can advise now, if you are not satisfied, then take up your issue at your school and at the Ministry of Education because there's nothing more we can say <laughs> <laughs> to bring some level of resolution to your issue. So viewers, thanks once again, listeners, thanks once again. And two more Sundays from now, is it two more Sundays from now? We would be having our next program, The Viewpoint. Thank you very much.